hello and welcome back to Pillars. Alright mateys, it's time to explore the rest of the northwest uh, part of uh, the Deadfire Archipelago. And uh, we are going back to Queen Wankaza as well. To tell her that we successfully uh, recruited uh, Ori or Koiki uh, to her cause. Despite that's not really my... Yeah, it wasn't really my goal in the first place, but hey, I'm just I was just exploring. I'm not sure. I'm like I'm just trying to give uh, Wong Kaza some slack, but I probably shouldn't. I know that she's trying to hold on to power, but come on, we can't even talk to her about the gullet. So can't say I'm a huge fan. Oh, Sayuka, we definitely have a mission there. Wonder if there are any other uh, places that we can explore here. It's a bit of a bummer that you actually have to just go around. Uh, that's not. Or I would like to see. Oh yeah, I would like to see a mod that increases the the sight range of the ship. I think that would be uh, very welcome. Or maybe we should buy us. Uh, huh. We can buy a scope, right? Not sure from who, but maybe we're gonna go back to Nekataka and look into that. And if you look into that, maybe it's gonna help. You hear a knock at the door to your quarters. Alright. Uh, it's open. <laughs> Oh, come inside. A quick series of knocks rap against your door. Baldo stands at your portal, a clamor growing on the deck beyond. Pardon me, Captain, but we have a problem. Elden Grim was killed? Hell yeah! No, I mean, uh, it was no. What? What the hell is going on? Handsome Belly and stabbed Elden Grim to death. Oh. Why did you do it? I'm gonna be the one who sort this out. On the deck you see handsome Ellie unbound and gagged. Al Dengrim lies against the bulwark, a couple of crew members crouch nearby, tears in their eyes as they lay a shroud over the corpse. Al Dengrim was a guy who was with us since the start. Alright, tell me what happened. It, we are basically deciding between, perhaps, I don't know. Okay, let's just hear him out. Baldo gestures to the gathered sailors. Oswald here found Elden Grimm in the hammer, hammocks down below, with handsome Alliam's dagger buried hilt deep between the ribs. Oswald nods. Forehead dotted its fat. Maybe he's just getting blamed. Search for Eldengrim's soul. You reach out with your senses, searching for any remnant of essence Eldengrim may have left behind. You find nothing. The victim has moved on. Really? Did anyone see it? The sailors exchange glances. Anyone? Beldol asks. You hear? You heard the captain. Did anyone see this murder occur? I saw it. Oswald steps forward. I mean, I didn't actually see it happen, but I saw Handsome Eliam running up from the hold after it happened. The sailor frowns at Al Dengrim's fallen form. That's how I found the body. Cut Handsome Eliam loose now. Fetch me the whip. Wonder will be the judge of this. Kill Hall, handsome El Eliam. Oh, how could you betray us like this? The thing is, we might kill. The thing is, I, I don't necessarily want to get into a situation where I kill handsome Eliam and actually he didn't do it. Because, you know, the evidence is not exactly irrefutable. Cut handsome Eliam loose. Now. 
I'm not exactly sure what that means. Oh yeah. Oh, we should uh cut. Okay, but his bindings. I I would like to more information about how to. Okay, let's cut him loose. Or the man chuckles, then blinks. You're not serious, are you, Captain? Oswald scowls. The Captain's serious, all right. Cut the lucky fool loose. The other mates make to free Hans Valiam. None of us are going to sleep right after this, Captain. I wonder who'll get the strangling next. That's enough, Baldur shoulders uh, the baton. Captain's orders, break it up and get back to work. That's not what I really meant. Handsome Meliam shoots you a faint smile as he stumbles away from the deckhand, messaging his wrists where the bond had been into them. The Defiant sails on. That's not what I wanted though. I thought like, maybe cut him loose. So he feels... I don't know. I'm not, not like cut him loose. Like just because we cut him loose doesn't mean we are like all good with him. So... Looks like Sayuka might be the only island around here. Coward's hope. So... Should I buy a telescope? Does it actually help? Because if so, that's cool. Okay. Alright. So we explored everything. We only have Sayuka left. I... I did go into every single location. Alright, Sayuka. Because the telescope does come up uh, from time to time that, oh, uh, you get a... Uh, you, you have the option to check out the plague ship, for example. But it usually doesn't come up, and I wonder if it actually has any value other than that. Welcome to Okay, let's go for a quick reminder of what we are trying to do here. That fire northwest. Kili Corno, southwest. Oh yeah, this is... Wait for Elot to explain further. Now, head to Sayuka and search for any sign of Ramaro or where he's gone. Udin claimed Ramaro intends to resupply at Sayuka before leaving the Deathfire Surf and wants us to follow in search of the old pirate. Hi guys, what's up? You are welcome in Sayuka, Traveler. As surely as the winds stir the sea. The young Kwana woman uh, gives you a sunny smile that shows every one of her pointed teeth. No, no, no. How many times must I demonstrate the proper way to greet a visitor? What? The undersecretary makes emphatic uh, chopping motions with his hand, a snarl curling his thin lips. I say, I must have forgotten again. Will you remind me of the line, undersecretary? We say clear skies, traveler. Simple, elegant, and no smiling. Do you understand, Greeter Tebe? Can you repeat it once more? I want to make sure I've got it. Tebe turns wide, innocent eyes on the Undersecretary. The Undersecretary opens his mouth to speak, but his expression abruptly clouds. He shoots a scowl at Tebe and elects instead not to dignify her joke at his expense. Questions, Traveler? What there's to know about Sayuka? Sayuka, known to my people as Rubiri, is a colonial outpost of the Royal Deadfar Company. Oh. 
Teba makes no effort to hide the boredom in her voice. The island of Sayuka is the Royal Deadfire Company's center of engineering research and development in the archipelago. Oh, you're definitely more excited about this. Our work is directed by Fleet Master Okaya, the youngest Rawataian ever to hold the title. Best of her class at the Naval Academy in Tokoa, and a brilliant engineer, our Fleet Master. Pride warms his voice. You forgot to mention the giant sharks, Undersecretary. Why are you dressed like Royal Death Fairy Company soldier, Tebe? Hey, Kira. I wonder the same every day. Tebe tugs at the neck of her uniform and rolls her dark eyes at the Undersecretary when she thinks he's not looking. Tebe learns to perform her duties as a Rawataian might. The Undersecretary straightens his back and squares his shoulders. Her fellow Juana show a... Lamentable disinterest in the proper way of doing things. He nods uh, curtly in Teba's direction. Do not speak about me as if I am not here. Wait, giant sharks? Giant sharks, giant coral, giant trees, Hekira. The only thing not bigger in Sayuka is us Kuana. Alright. Small mercy. No one knows why things grow large in Sayuka, but there are all sorts of theories. Me? I think Galloway smiles on us. Alright. Tabish cheeks glow with a faint blush. The first authentic emotion you've seen cross her face. Superstition is unbecoming of a Royal Dead Fire <laughs> Company officer, Tebe. I say, it's a lucky thing I'm not one then. What is an undersecretary exactly? A career sandal sniffer and busybody. So far as I can tell. You ungrateful sag! I am the second in command to Fleet Master Okaya, the governor of your piddling little island, and I will not be mocked by a smart mouthed idler like you! The Undersecretary's Joel's quiver with barely contained rage. So I have heard many, many times. Hey, it's just me. This guy's terrible. <laughs> I don't know. I just went for that girlish giggle. You don't know the half of it. Ah! Oh. What was that, Greeter Tebe? No, uh, nothing. I, I was just uh, complimenting you. Surely just the breeze, Undersecretary. Hell yeah. You will call me Sir. Oh, come on. Akira, I certainly will not. Leave. All right, but it does seem like they enjoy quite a bit of freedom here. Marofetto Liano? You find a man dressed in a worn, dirty leather armor. His long, scraggly beard is encrusted with salt. His curling hair has clearly not seen a comb in some time, and the toenails of his bare f feet should be are cracked and torn. The only thing of any value that he carries is an amulet. Oh, greetings. He hesitates a moment before saying more. Might I help you with something? Tell me about yourself. I suppose. He looks at you quizzically, perhaps unsure why you ask him such a personal question. I was a proud man once, a gold pack knight. Then I took a job and it, it went poorly. I could no longer stay with the order after that. His eyes take on a faraway look as he remembers. In the years since, I have wandered the length of the dead fire, dedicating my life to self-discipline an abstination from worldly distractions. It is only through suffering that the soul becomes strong. Do you understand? Uh, that's it? Well, I am waiting for someone. But I do not know when they will arrive or who they will be when they get here. All I know is that they are a seer and they seek me. So I wait. Then how will you recognize them? I will not, but it does not matter. I have this amulet here, and I yet draw breath. That is all I need. Brandish your weapon, amulet, huh? I could use one of those. Can I have it? No. Someone is coming for me, and they will know my amulet. You should have faith that the seer will find you without it. That's the true, that's the true test. Perhaps. Perhaps you have a point. <laughs> oh boy. He gently tugs the amulet off over his head. He holds it in his palm a moment, his expression unreadable, then hands it to you. Really? Just please, 
Take good care of it. Could you teach me what you learned in your ways wandering the death fire? I have already given you my most prized possession. And you ask for more still. <laughs> Fine. I will show you what I can. The 3,000 copper. What's with the 3,000 copper price? Fine by me. Find me if you need me. What? I I, I meant to you, say I, I want I help it. You with something? I, fine by me. Oh, I can't learn his... Okay. Straining. Hey, Caddy. Burn hand. What? What guy's doing? It's barely signed! So... That, that, that rock is just so oddly red. Anyhow. Oi, Cap. There he be. There be Romoro. Sure is my ass be blue. We don't need that image in our heads. Well, I guess we talk to him. I mean, that's the point, right? I wish you'd not come, my lad. Please, though I be to see you. Even all these anarchists spare no mercy for mutineers. Seraphim breaks away and peers up at Romaro. Aye, but you, a traitor? The very thought of it be ludicrous. He spreads his open palms wide to either side. Return with us. I'll be protecting you, and we'll be seen in your fair judging. Uh, with a slow shake of his head, Romaro swallows. I can't, Blue. Much as I loathe to leave. I'm dead to these waters, and they to me. Seraphim gapes and sputters before finding his response. Break more biscuits and call me Swabby. You've gone addled in your dotage, ain't you? What? Well, the Orden looks to you, lower lip twitching. Captain, unsheave that silver tongue of yours and talk some damn sense into this old sort. Sounds like he wants to leave the pirate life behind. Why did you leave Fort Deadlight? You might have been safe there. Where do you intend to go? My crew. Those few souls who followed me from the sorcerer and I set sail for lands west. The reach, perhaps, or the living lands. Perhaps we'll run trade from Edir or Velia. Wherever fortune leads. But that be the far fucking side of Aeora. Ach, a journey and a half, to be certain. Why did you leave the Principi? The Principi have changed, and not for the better. Once. We aligned behind a common purpose. What? Stealing from people? Now, we fractured into two extremes, each wallowing in its own corruption. Is it true what you accused of? I've not heard every charge against me, but that of mutiny, of that charge, I bear guilt. Seraphim's ears drop. He reaches for Romaro, but stops short, letting his hands fall. Why? The sorcerer were our own in kin. We're a cock swelling pride. And you bartered it to an half drowned old elf for a pint built fucking clipper. Fourteen years I spent swabbing them decks. Longer yet for you. Captain Bastion trusted you. I trusted you. Ak. Bon Miko. Romaro's mouth opens briefly before closing again, and he swallows. Sientere, Seraphim. I've disappointed you. Hurt you. No words can justify my actions. I only hope you believe me, that I did what needed doing. How can I? You're hiding something. Ach, that I am. Many things. For many reasons. I learned long ago that it's oft times better to hold your tongue. The watcher here reminded me that you and me, we'd be deeper than two hands on a deck. We'd be kin. You'd be the closest thing I've ever had to a father. And if you be setting sail, I'll be embarking with you. Your journeys with this watcher have changed you, Blue. You wear it well, Bon Amico. Captain Bastian had the sorcerer slaving. Seraphim blinks, expression blank, his mouth opens, closes, opens again. His fur bristles, ears angling lower. Slaving? 
What kind of fathom-headed hornswoggle be this? The sorcerer were my kin. They weren't slaving. I hunted slavers for the captain. We freed slaves together. So I also believed. But Bastian sold those we saved to the Crookspur slavers. I found records of it in his quarters almost a decade's worth. When I confronted him, it went poorly. Rage rushes through your blood, flushing your skin, and cold hate spirals along the length of your spine as confusion blurs your vision. F let the visions come. Sand beneath your feet, crusted and blooded. You young and small, filthy and shaking in fright. Cheers from all corner. Cheers, too. And, and the shouts of the kid before you. Amana and fries your height. Heavy muscle and soft fat, wrapped in bright robes. Don't make me go again, you plead. Don't make me. His heavy hand sends you sprawling in the sand to a chorus of jubilant applause. You bounce to your feet as the other slave boy approaches. You feel his thoughts, a tickle in the back of your mind, his fear, greater than your own. But what can you do? Only one may live. You silence everything but the anger, but the hate, and he propels your snapping teeth and grasping hands. The blows light but fast, and the other youth all screams. Sientere, bon amico. Forgive me. I meant you not to know. To keep your faith in our traditions. To remain optimistic. A bright star within the Principi. Sounds to me that whatever you believed in was a lie in the first place. And now you hate the new blood and the new blood hates the old blood. Like, it was a lie in the first place. Hmm. Seraphim, you heard Romaro's confession. What would you do with him now? Cut him loose, Cam. Aye, he did the dead fire a fine turn by sinking them slavers. But among the Consuelo, mutiny means death. But Guan for a no. Ah, we'll leave you be, Romaro. Agrasima, watcher. The clipper will be loaded soon, and then we'll be away. Chores, Seraphim. Bon amico. Take this. May you have rare cause to use it. Sure. I hope we meet again someday. On calmer seas. Caress, bon amico. Who would have thought? So we got the bush shop here. Market. Oh, this could be relevant. Maybe these guys are selling good stuff for me. Takua. As you approach the fish vendor, flashes you a broad, chini grin. He beckons you over with a wave of his hand and directs your attention to his latest delivery. I want some All fish. The wonders of the sea and more besides. But it's just fish. I don't like fish. It's that, oh, luminous lobster? <laughs> right. Don't care. Kwame? Oh, weapon vendor? A young woman leans against the tail. Her eyes half close. She jerks awake when she hears the scuff of your boots on the flagstones and fumbles about for something to polish in an effort to look busy. What? A what can I do for you? She... Surreptitiously... Wipes a bit of drool from the corner of her mouth. What do you have in stock? Put your eyes on these. She waves her... Across the... Her hand across the merchandise with a theatrical flair. Yeah, like... They need to check some of these uh, conversation options. Many of them have mistakes. It doesn't matter much. So. This Raho? Shh. 
What about this stalker's patience? One handed spear. Dead. Oh, this is good for sneaky sneaks, right? Oh, the, the Quaro price. We should use that. No? Mm, yeah. Uh, let's put that in. More damage with spells. Alright. Tipa, Veto, and Rivahi. We must have angered Galloway in form. Okay, never mind that. Broad shouldered man with a long jagged scar across his bow argues with a woman outside the longhouse. He throws his hands up about to shout, but the woman cuts him off mid exclamation. I will not return to the longhouse, Weto, never! And I won't blub my teeth about it further! She plants her hands firmly on her hips and juts out her chin in defiance. But what are you so stubborn? The Rowatines do us a great favor and you spit in their faces! Veto sees us is shouting when he notices you listening in. What do you need? Is there a problem? Not at all, not at all. My sister and I are just having a small disagreement. Veto rubs at the back of his neck and looks away, embarrassed. It is because you speak like this that I yell at you in the first place! You're beginning to sound like those Rawatayan outlanders, and it shames me to say so. What's your problem with the Rawatayans? Ignore her. She has an urchin up her ass about her cousins from the north and can't be persuaded. I should know. I've tried. Beto, she might be wrong, but you're disrespecting her. I... she... He shoots Tipa an irritated look and rolls his eyes. Is it so unreasonable to want to protect my culture, our culture, from our greedy neighbors? She spits on the ground between you and grits her teeth. They arrive in ships laden with goods they believe will please us and think that gives them the right to build their walls on our land. Then they act surprised when we don't all fall at their feet with cries of gratitude. Well, she has a point. Sounds like the Rotaians are doing a favor. Well, she does have a point. Akira, don't encourage her. I will never hear the end. We are no strangers to the menaces of the Deadfire. Pirates, Colonials, Nagati's children. We have bested all of them before. But that doesn't mean you have to fight them. We don't need them or their walls to keep us safe. And we surely don't need their longhouse. Well, you haven't guessed this longhouse. Well, what does of all this have to do with the longhouse? Another of the Rawatayans' tricks. When our huts were destroyed in the storms, they did not rebuild them like they were as we requested. They built this longhouse instead. Well, I think you just shut the fuck up about that. So they built your house. Like you requested? I, I don't... Do, do they owe you anything? I think this long cast is pretty sweet. Are you not one people? They said. Why do you live divided, each cast apart from the others? They believe they know what's best for us. But how we live is not their business. Oh. So I suppose the problem is that everybody lives in this... Long house together? I don't know. The fleet master says we are weak because we don't work as one. She doesn't see that it's our differences that make the Huana strong. She doesn't want to see it, lest it put the lie to their enterprise here. Well, I feel like I just don't necessarily have... Well, probably I have enough information, but... I could use more information. Why do you support the Riotians? We are no strangers to storms. But last year we suffered many powerful ones in quick succession. And our harvest of Kawiki fruit was destroyed. Price share was rationed. Famine loomed. And then the Rawatayans sent ships. Load after load of food. Enough to see us to the next harvest. They could have left us to die. 
but they didn't. Sounds like a nice thing to do. It was only a ploy to make us dependent on them, Akira. We took their food and helping hands, and now we sleep in their buildings and watch the sea from their walls. Um. I I just don't see really the the disadvantage of sharing, especially if they're helping you out. The one and Rautaians are both Juana. Why not be allied? Under whose banner? Rautais? Then we cease to be Juana as surely as if they conquered us. We have the land and resources Rautai needs, and they have the military might we lack. We share a common ancestor. Why not create a common culture? Together we would be strong. Now the problem here is that land and resources... The thing is... The, once those resources run out, uh, you know, the Rautaians might just leave. I say, if you truly believe that, then you're a bigger fool than I thought. Johanna should forge their own path. The Rautaians should understand what's important. Game, you're not giving me easy choices, are you? That's a good question. I don't know. I dry tie and seem peaceful. No, 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 I, I don't agree with the first statement, that Juana should force their own path. I don't necessarily agree that the Roatans understand what's important. And the third is the non-answer. I think the Roatans understand what's important. I, I could, uh, agree with that statement more than the Juana should force their own path. Akira, what a surprise. The Rawataian's mouthpiece believes she is in the right. They're just discrediting my my statement because you call me a dis a Rawataian mouthpiece. Tipa sneers and crosses her arms over her chest. She looks away. Her teeth clench. Your support is appreciated, I say. Don't mind my sister. Her heart is in the right place. He tries to put his hand on his sister's shoulder, but she shrugs him off, and a look of disgust curling her lips. Rivahi? I hate to see Tippa and Wado fight. But check this long house. Is it a nice place? Or just a dump? Seems like a nice place. It doesn't have a funny. lot of room. Over, then under, then twist. Good. A middle-aged Kuara woman raises her brow brows in question when you approach. Her hands too full with braided ropes of dried reeds to greet you properly. Besides, beside her stands an elderly Roparu man, awkwardly grasping his own bundle of reed rope. Oh, hello. Come to watch me tie rugs, have you? Yeah. Asaru, he has been teaching me. How fruitful is that? He indicates the woman beside him with a dip of his chin. The corners of his mouth twitch like he's crying to hide a smile. What say, traveler? Isn't it unusual for Kuara and Rupara to do the same work? Can you teach me how to tie a rug? <laughs> it's not a skill one learns in an afternoon. But should you wish to spend many months here in this long house, you're welcome. I don't think so. I say, we have the room. So long as you do not mind sleeping like so many scrolls stuffed in a shelf. Isn't it unusual for Kuara and Rupar to do the same work? I don't really like the caste system the... the Juana has. So they definitely have a caste system. Not, not, not really caste system. I, I'm, I'm wrong to say that. Right, it's it's a class. 
But like, are they locked into their class? Is it just the general description uh, that describes poor Juana? Or are they actually locked into their working class? Oh, the Roparu are destined to be reborn in, into the Kuaru or Mataru class in their next lives. Oh, yes, it's a class system. Easily, class system. Without a doubt. Class system, price share. Okay. Isn't it unusual for Kuaru and Roparu to do the same work? It is, as you say. But I have always admired the beautiful rugs Osaru makes. And Nadunga can fix anything. Is it not reasonable we should learn from each other? Though she smiles and as she speaks, Osaru's words hold a defensive edge, as if she's had to explain their unusual agreement many times before. <laughs> Akira, especially if we must suffer Waturi together. A sly grin spreads across the old man's face, and he elbows Osaru playfully in her side. Just so. Osaru swats his arm away with a small laugh, then her thoughts returning to Waturi. She makes a face like she's bitten into an underripe quaky fruit. Isn't it stressful having all these cats living together in one building? It's not so bad, <laughs> excepting the nights Waturi gets into the palm wine. Ikira, but that man does snore loud enough to call down the rains. She snorts and the Dunga beside him smutters a raspy chuckle. There is hardly any space to tie my rugs, to be certain. And I haven't had a moment to myself in weeks. But there are also new friends to be made. Carry the winds with you, traveler. Alright. Why not? So, that definitely... <laughs> okay, maybe this... this. I just kind of assumed that... Uh... It wasn't a caste system, they just... Ropar were just, uh... Unfortunate, uh, Juana. But damn. Caste system? Like, full-on caste system? You, you just can never escape it? Well, apparently you escape it when you die. But, come on. Just be a good little worker, and when you die, you're gonna be... Of a higher class, right? So we can go to the Deathfire Archipelago. Leave it to me. So we have two buildings we can go in. Hmm. The question is, how do you change such a such a I don't know if I can Call it a form of government? How do you change it? Like cash system, price share system. Well, at least it's called price share. Well, the well, basically what happens is that uh, you have a ca your your own cast. Everybody uh, does their own jobs, and then whatever they make, produce. Uh, goes to the top, then apparently it gets uh, distributed, not evenly, but in such a way that uh, everybody is, uh, everybody, like, at least can keep going, I, I suppose. Not so much a case in the gullet with the Raparo. Anyway, Fleetmaster Kaya. Fleetmaster Kaya stares with unwavering intensity at the small sea of papers strewn across her desk. She holds a pencil lightly in one hand and absently uh, taps the tip of it against her lips. After a moment, a low hum escapes her throat. The sound ends with a harsh scoff. Then she flicks her eyes to meet yours. Artillery trajectory calculations. Terribly tedious and lamentably imprecise in a storm. As she chews on the end of her pencil, her gaze grows distant, like she's watching something beyond you. Ah, but the numbers distract me. Where are my manners? You found me with a rare spare moment. Who are you? Did you not read the name on the door before you came in? You do know you're in the office of the Fleet Master, I hope. I mean, who are you in a general sense? Oh, good save. Ah, 
You meant to ask why I'm important enough to have my name on a door. Exactly. I'm a fleet master of the Rawatayan Navy stationed at Sayuka, a research colony of the Royal Deadfire Company. What are you researching? Andra's mortar. Storms that strong, that consistent. I suspect they're not natural. Impressive title. To one unfamiliar with the Rawatayan Navy, perhaps. But mine is an administrative position. I see to the smooth running of Sayuka. Of course, it'd be a sight easier if there weren't the coral to contend with. Oh, what fleet? I, I don't see any boats. You misunderstand. I don't command ships. I command this port. Rawatayan vessels docking here are under my protection, but I don't tell them where to go. That's the Hazanui's job. Got it. Can we steal Give your... Lantern. My fingers be fat and furry. Thingies. Superb Archibus. Alright, I guess that's it. Not exactly. We still have the main building to go inside. The workshop. We can also exit the place. Is there anything else on this island? Looks like it, maybe. Okay, let's just go into the workshop. Hazanui demanded additional cannons. We must oblige her. We cannot spare the weight. Already the ballast is overtaxed. Increase the size of the ballast then. And store it where? Then we must increase the size of the ship. Take your concerns to the Valian. This mess is her responsibility now. I had to. Let's talk. Stay out of the way. Oh, come on. What's this? Whatever hides beneath this tarp reeks of brass polish and sheen oil. Seriously? That's it? Okay, uh, I guess we didn't have a lot to do in Sayuka. What? We're under attack. Hold them off while I tell the others. On it. Hurry, they're just outside the gate. What? Bears? Right between the eyes. Right between the eyes. Ah. Uh, oh, oh, Bog druids? In the water. Really? Bog druids with their bears? Attacking the town? It's a bit odd. Oh, baby. Oh, it didn't work. Come on. It terrified the boars. What else we need to take out? Let's do that hit. Calicot's freezing. <laughs> Captain. No, that's not. Oh, I not what I wanted. So just a bunch of druids attacked us. What the hell was that? Wait. Looks like a lot of merchants died. 
Okay, what is this hunting season? Uh, survive to... F um, okay, we need to... Talk with Fleetmaster Koya now. Now you wanna talk to me? Like, proper? You have a problem with bug druids? you were instrumental in our stand against the druids. Well done. Yes, I single-handedly took them all out. The druids have harried us from the moment we made landfall. Your people fought and... Admirably. Isn't this their land? If it is, I haven't seen the deed. Oh, Your smile is small and hawk-like predatory. Several days ago, I dispatched a small force to quell them, but I've heard nothing of them since. To be frank, I suspect they were killed. And I no longer have enough people to repel another attack. We Rauhataians are tougher than most, but we're engineers all the same. We weren't trained to fight. Given your impressive showing in our hour of need, I'd hoped I might impose on you with a request for aid. This isn't charity, lady. Certainly not. You will be well rewarded for your efforts. Go to the bog where I sent my people. You'll find the druids' leaders there, no doubt. Kill them. Should you do so, the Royal Deadfire Company would stand in your debt. And I would be immensely grateful. Okay. So... We need to go after some druid guys. Where was have you actually visited? Which lands... <gasps> no, wait. What was the strangest thing you ever saw? Found an island with a pillar of Adra carved into a giant foot. God, what a thrill. You're so well-traveled. It's amazing. But don't you ever miss home? What about your loved ones? Aside from my family, anyone special to me is already here, Firefly. Well, that's... You see, I... I mean... Same for me. I thought I'd miss my brethren more, but having someone who understands me, it's a surprise and relief. I think this uh, little break from the uh, priests uh, do you some good. Uh, so, tip. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.